few days ago, Missy and I sat down and made a video that you're about to see. Now, as you watch that video, you're gonna see a couple of things. It's a very heavy emotional video. And as we've watched it over and over, we know that. And so to set it up, what I wanna say is this. I know some of you don't have the seven minutes that it's gonna to take to watch the whole video. But the bottom line is this. Even though we are not on the ground in Haiti right now, even though we have no American staff on the ground in Haiti for an indefinite time period, we are as sold out to Haiti as we ever have been. We know that God has a plan and we wanna be a part of that. We're just leading that from here. We're still committed to Haiti. We're still committed to the ministry that God's called us to. And we need you now more than we ever have. Because what God's doing in Nepali is going to ripple throughout Haiti and eventually to other places. We'll share more about that in the days to come. But I really hope that you'll watch this video and you'll get a little taste of what's going on right now with My Life Speaks. You know, in scripture, it tells us in Ecclesiastes that there's a time for everything. Time to laugh, time to cry, time to plant, time, a time to harvest. Well, the last 10 years for My Life Speaks, we have had a lot of different seasons. We started out with um, having all Americans, bringing in American staff, bringing in American interns. Um, and we quickly realized that we needed to train our Haitian staff. We needed to see them be able to become leaders and lead each other. And so we never wanted My Life Speaks to be about Mike and Missy. We never wanted it to be about the American staff. We wanted it to be about a Christ-centered culture led by Haitians. And that's what we're seeing today is Haitians leading Haitians. You know, we launched in 2012 and we just celebrated our 10 year anniversary of work on the ground in Haiti this past January, a very exciting time. See, we had always brought Americans in on short-term mission teams to experience Haiti, to have an immersion into Haiti. In fact, we called them immersion trips. But in February of 2019, we brought our last group of Americans to Haiti. In fact, we actually had problems getting them out because of some protests and violence manifestations that were happening. And then 2019 led to 2020, and we really don't have to talk a whole lot about 2020. In 2021, though, Haiti really saw some darkness. The president of Haiti was assassinated in his home, in his bedroom in July. We saw kidnappings rise. We saw gang violence increase. We saw gangs begin to take large portions of the capital city of Port-au-Prince and then go to the outskirts. Haiti had crime, Haiti has inflation. There are just problems upon problems, whether it be fuel or resources and supplies. And then in November for us, everything changed. Some very dear friends of ours were kidnapped and held for ransom. Some of our best Haitian friends. And at that moment we realized our mere presence in Haiti was bringing issue to the ones that we love and serve, our community. And so we've always lived by 1 Thessalonians 2.8, which simply says, we loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. And we saw that our presence on the ground was causing problems, and we did not want to be the source of those problems. So we made the very difficult decision to remove all of our American staff from on the ground leadership in Haiti. And as of February of this year, all staff members have relocated to safety in different places. Andrea, Bethany, Eli, Rhonda, they've all relocated. It's been a very, very difficult moment for all of us. You know, scripture says in John 10, 10, that the enemy comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. That's right. And there were moments when um, I think all of us felt like the enemy was winning, but then we go back and we look at that verse, Genesis 50, 20. Yeah. And it says, what you intended for harm, God intended for much more than this, yeah. um, to save lives. And that's what God is doing today on the ground in Haiti. Our Haitian leadership is thriving. They're doing exactly what they've been called to do. And I'm so incredibly proud to watch how God is using them to further the vision of My Life Speaks. 
But in Isaiah 55, it says God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. And um, I've, I've realized we're, we're not leaving Haiti. We're just not going to be living in Haiti. And Missy's exactly right. Our vision has not changed at all. We want to develop a Christ-centered culture one life at a time. We just won't be on the ground to lead that. Haitians have to lead this. We still see God doing magnificent things in Haiti. And we are always going to tell the stories of his goodness and his greatness happening in Haiti. Uh, we also know that the only hope for Haiti is a bona fide Holy Spirit-led revival. Haitians have to lead this revival. There has to be repentance. There has to be an acknowledgement of sin. And there has to be a movement forward. But here's what we want you to know. We're not leaving Haiti. We're not forsaking Haiti. We're just doing it from a different spot at this moment. Thank you so much for loving Haiti. Thank you for loving the ministry that God has called us to. And thank you for being a part of our community and our family. We love you. Thank you. The reason that we put this video together is because we can't sit with all of you who have been a part of the My Life Speaks family for so long. Some of you recently, but some of you for over 10 years. And I want you to hear one thing if you don't hear anything else. We are not abandoning Haiti. We're not abandoning Nepali. We're not abandoning the call that God's placed on My Life Speaks. Our American staff has not done that either. But for the safety and the security of our local community in Haiti, we have removed all of our Americans. We will be leading from afar. Technology allows us to be in contact with our staff in Haiti every day. Every Monday, we get still to have our director meetings kind of in person, but we're all familiar with Zoom right now. So we do everything we can to stay in contact and to keep letting people know we've not left and that God's still in the middle of this. You know, we talked about the heaviness and just how difficult this video was. Well, the next thing is we're so excited for what God's doing. You know, we looked back through some old videos and we found this one. We've chosen to reorganize our entire organization around our calling, our mission statement, which is we are to develop a Christ-centered culture one life at a time. And if we're going to affect change, it's going to start with us. The few American staff that we have on the ground spreads out to our Haitian employees, to our community, and then the ripple effects go far and wide into the communities around us. Because it's not just something that a bunch of Americans believe in. It is the saving message for the entire world. We are excited about what God is getting ready to do in Haiti through our Haitian leadership. Families continue to be strengthened. Those kids who have not had families now have safe foster families that they live with. And the best part is you never age out of a family. Education continues to grow. We have pre-K through fifth grade this year and four special ed classrooms, and we have a waiting list for more kids to come in. Because when you do something under the banner of Christ and you raise his, him up above anybody else, people are drawn to him. Those kids hear the gospel every single day in their work and in the conversations with their teachers and assistants. Also, our public health program continues to do things that we never could have imagined. We have three Haitian doctors, a Haitian nurse practitioner, four Haitian nurses, and a Haitian lab tech that run our clinic. It's all Haitian run and they diagnose and treat problems on an unbelievable scale. Our therapy program, we have therapists who not only see patients in our clinic, but they also go into people's homes and surrounding communities because maybe they can't get to us or maybe because the price of fuel, they can't take a motorcycle to come, but we're going to them. And not only are we doing these things in public health and education and family because it's what God's called us to do, it's an opportunity to share the gospel. And so everyone we work with has the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and know the truth of who he is. We could not do this without you. We need your partnership now more than ever. Thank you so much for being a part of the My Life Speaks family. Love you.